Okay, so yeah, like I said, I've been wanting to do more of these uh, banner reviews, and this is actually a pretty interesting one considering it's the Choose Your Legends, and we get like crazy ass units every time. Now I've already seen this once, um, and I've also seen it on um, uh, what's his name, Phoenix Master One's channel. Um, just thought I'd add some stuff to it, and I'll, I'll mention here or there um, whenever he brings up a different point or something like that, or like. You know, if he brings something up, I'll maybe address like certain points that I remember him saying. Um, but yeah, let's just kind of get into it and, and see what we're in store. What's in store for us? So the first one is Marth. Um, of course, Marth is just going to be a, another sword there character. Better so um, than sword, sword, so that's fine. Here. Um. Let's take a look at these skills real quick. Uh, so at the bottom, we'll just kind of go over that. I want to go over the bottom one just because uh, it's it's cut off by the little uh, search bar thing there. Uh, so we've got even Tempest on him, which is fine. Um, it's decent fodder for like, it's just annoying on on AR or like anywhere. Anywhere it really comes out and it's really irritating because it's like, it's a surprise factor sometimes. Like now granted, if you're paying attention, then you know, obviously whatever right but like when you're when you're just playing sometimes you're not like you don't want to sit there and you don't want to take like you know half an hour or an hour to do an aether raids match and you're just kind of like ah oh, yeah it looks pretty simple whatever uh even tempest catches you up sometimes so you know you can get victories off of that just just by having it happen uh but let's take a look at uh genesis falchion because this weapon is um pretty overloaded so for one we've got a special acceleration with the um the first uh, one turn cooldown, uh, effective against dragons, which is on all the falchions. Uh, he gets, whenever he's within two spaces, or if he initiates combat, he gains the plus five, which is interesting that, like, all these weapons, like, if you start looking at a lot of these weapons, they just give you, like, a bunch of stats, like, oh, plus five stats. And uh, for those of you who saw the, the whole Fey channel, we're getting more uh, flowers. Like, you can put more flowers on your units. And that becomes kind of, like, not worthless, you know what I mean? But, like... It just becomes kind of like okay whatever why why would i do that when it's just like every unit that comes out not only has like plus five on top of the old bst units they've also got weapons that it just give them plus five to everything just because right like as in here's here you go right so that's kind of interesting to me um again it's like it's not the worst thing it's kind of necessary because uh it gives new players a chance right because new players are summoning new units so it gives them a chance to fight against people who have been investing in like you know plus 10 like whatever's from since the beginning of like the game or whatever right like it's kind of a balance so it's fine uh, i just find that kind of interesting how like band-aidy that is it's just like uh well they've got like you know next gen bst and uh just add five more on top of everything it's like why didn't you just take that effect off of the weapon reduce the text and then just add those plus five to the character's base stats right but i don't know it's, it's just weird uh, but there is there is like there is requirements to it, so it's not like the worst thing. But it, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but anyway, so we get all these plus five stats, and then he gets bonuses based on uh, people within three spaces. Uh, wait, also grants bonuses based on the fact on the three allies with the highest total bonuses. Oh, okay, so th that's not even a ranged thing. It's just anywhere on the map, the three people with the highest bonuses. Depending on how high they are, you get these eff effects. Uh, so the first one is uh, prevents follow-up attacks, which is fine. Um, uh, oh, so no, no, it's like the whole full, it's a full null follow-up, the null C disrupt, or no, no, yeah, no, no follow-up disrupt, um, which is pretty good. Um, it just saves it so you can run spurn and be able to double and then stop people like cheating out their doubles. That's fine. Uh, he gets plus five attack when there's 25 or more and he gets five HP, which is good because we'll see in a, in a little bit he takes self damage. Uh, and then finally, if there's more than 60, then, you know, he can just desperation people for free, uh, which is pretty good considering he's got a one turn special. That's pretty strong. Um, boost damage by 35% of unit speed, which Sothis is, is also two and it only does 20% of her speed, but it also heals her. But this gives like a bunch of random stuff uh bonuses to allies and bonuses to himself and then bonuses to everybody so uh that's pretty good um 
Yeah, I mean, not much else to say. I mean, it's it's um, it's Mar. It's another Marth, right? He he's got kind of variations and upgrades to everything that he gets every single time. Uh, so that's that's fine. Uh, distant pressure. I, I think this is kind of interesting because this is basically just a straight up um, power creep of distant counter. Because uh, unit can attack regardless of foe's range, right? And that's it. Like that is distant counter in there, and then all the rest of the stuff is just free, like just free stuff on top of that. Uh, so at start of combat, if unit's HP is over 25, he gets 5 extra speed. Um, then you take 5 damage, but that's alright because uh, he gains 5 from his sword as well as... Like, personally, I'm probably going to... I might pity for him. Um, I'm, I'm going to be pulling the pity system, the little like spark system or whatever. Um, probably for a copy of him. Hopefully I get a copy. I, I only want to spend 1 pity on here and get everything I want, but... Uh, chances are I'm probably not that's not going to happen so but my point is uh this skill is one that i want so i'm probably going to spend orbs to try to get this skill uh unit can counter attack regardless of foe's range um plus five speed so that'd be pretty good i mean i'm probably going to just use that on my um ninja hana because like i said it's just five extra speed for free um then we look at Spurn, obviously, we got, I mean, Spurn's been here since forever. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is if, if he doesn't get the healing from his S, from his sword, um, I was about to say S1 or whatever, for, <laughs> like we're playing uh, Epic 7. Uh, but if he doesn't get the healing from his sword, um, basically, the, the chip damage from the distant pressure helps him get below uh, Spurn range, and it makes it so, like, he does more damage on his, on his special, so um, that's pretty cool. Uh, so even if you don't get all the benefits from your sword, uh, they, they still help you to some degree. So there you go. So he gets plus 10 attack from his sword, which is pretty crazy as well. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, like, if you want to invest into a plus 10 brave uh, Marth, by all means. But to me, all I see here is uh, distant pressure, right? Just, you know, distant, distant counters upgrade uh, for speed tanks, especially, uh, obviously. Uh, we'll, we'll see later there's more upgrades to certain things but uh yeah like this weapon looks pretty good but even even like with all the stat but like you get plus five to everything special trigger a dragon effectiveness uh no follow-up uh healing with the plus five attack and the desperation even with all that stuff on him like i don't even think he's better than the young marth right like the young marth at a plus 10 is a pretty pretty scary force to be dealing with um but yeah, if you I mean if you want to plus ten him by all means, it's just not something I really care about, especially because it's another um, it's another uh, red sword infantry unit, so it's like we've got a million of them, and I'm always a bigger fan of Roy anyway. Um, so you know, aesthetically, I like Roy better, right? Or kind of like character wise, I like Roy better. Kit wise, it's not really that interesting. So uh, if you ask me, I'm probably just gonna. Hopefully pull, try to get this distant pressure, and then uh, peace out after that. Uh, but yeah, so that that's that's Brave Marth. Finally got his own uh, Brave thing. Now it's kind of interesting that a lot of people were complaining that they wanted a Brave, or they wanted a win, wanted him to win Choose Your Legends, but Marth has like a bunch of clones already anyway. So it's like, I don't know, why you want more, why you want another Marth? So we got another Erica, Lance. Lance, uh, Lance Cav. Uh, so her weapon is kind of whatever, right? So it's like a special trigger again, uh, effective against dual effectiveness against Cav and, and armor, which is pretty good because it helps against Fallen Edelgard. Uh, but I, I think one of the one of the interesting things to me is that Fallen Edelgard right now is running uh, her B, her A slot passive, which is her A slot, which is the uh, attack defense ideal. But that's only because those stats are really useful and people don't have plus 10 Edelgard yet. I mean, some people do, right? Mega Whales and if you're in tier 36 or whatever and you're dealing with that all the time, uh, then that's, you know, that's whatever. Uh, but for most of us, for most people who play this game, we've only ever seen base Edelgards or plus 1 Edelgards, right? And at plus 1, like, you need the stats so much that you usually run the her you know the attack defense ideal I, eh, well that was horrible the attack defense ideal but as people start pulling for her whenever she comes back and people start getting plus 10 edel guards um then they're just going to swap out the a slot for uh what is it Svalin shield uh or is it granny shield i think it's Svalin. 
Uh, they just will swap it out for Spallen Shield, and we're still going to have the same problem. And now she's going to be even less counterable, right? So that's something that's important to realize is that right now it's like, oh, look, here's, you know, uh, armor effectiveness. Armor effectiveness here, there, everywhere, right? It's like you, that's, you want that to counter Edelgard. But in the future, it's not going to counter her because people are just going to run her with Spallen Shield and not really care too much, right? So that's something that's important to realize. Um, that's one of the things I wanted to point out from... Um, Phoenix Master 1's video is like, oh, you know, she'll help you deal with Edelgard. She'll help you deal with Edelgard for other reasons besides the armor effectiveness. Um, and it's only a temporary solution anyway, because again, like I said, it's just cab effect. It's just a uh, tank effectiveness, which won't be a weakness of Edelgard's for long. So that's something to consider. Uh, but again, it has the same thing we saw last time. So just another plus five stats on top of already having um, BST higher than any, than, you know, the next level BST for, for calves. So might as well just like bunch those plus five i don't know why they insist on wasting so much text space um when you can just add that to the to her weapon to her to her stats right but i guess it's like because there's some restriction it's like oh there's some restriction on there so it's not 100 percent. but whatever no one really cares i mean she has those plus five all the time if you're using her correctly anyway so whatever uh, but yeah, so also if you initiate combat she neutralizes the effects that prevent those follow-up attacks right so she can double um and she gets 30% damage reduction if she's over 25, right? So that's all That's all right. Um, and it works on both phases. So if they attack into her or she attacks, which is uh, pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so you get Luna. Again, there's a lot of stuff that you can explain. He had a graphic, so I probably suggest watching Phoenix Master 1's video. I haven't watched Tacho's video. I haven't watched um, Acris's videos because uh, they're, they're a lot more biased. Like Acris kind of has his own thing and then... Uh, uh, Tasho usually just hypes everything up like he's like, I don't know, like he's some sort of shill or something. Um, but Phoenix Master 1 usually just kind of comes in here and, and tells you everything explicitly. And he has a graphic on there to show you how uh, Surge Sparrow works and how Moonlight Bangle works in terms of their um, their X times whatever and then gaining, you know, penetration or defense scaling or, you know, whatever. So, you know, we'll just talk about it normally here. I'm not going to like make a graphic and show it to you guys because I don't know. I have that kind of uh, time or, or knowledge of how to use like Photoshop or something or whatever whatever program he would have used to make that. I, I don't know how to use that. Uh, so anyway, let, let's talk about um, for one attack speed menace is pretty cool. Um, if I'm you know again if I'm pulling on this banner, um, my priority is probably uh, Marth because of the distant counter, but she's a pretty close second because the Swift Sparrow and the attack speed menace are pretty good. Um, so let's take a look at the, the surge, the Swift Sparrow, the Surge Sparrow. I, I say Swift Sparrow because it's basically just an upgrade to Surge to Swift Sparrow three. Uh, it's basically uh, Swift Sparrow four. Now, uh, again, back in Phoenix Master One's video, he mentioned um, that this is not necessarily a straight upgrade because, like, uh, you know, Gale Force and, and things like that. Um, but all I have to say to that is, uh, not everyone plays like Acarus, where we want to make everything into a, a Gale Force unit. <laughs> Um, so a lot of people who run Swift Sparrow 3 run it just because it's, you know, a lot of speed and it's a lot of attack and it's like that unit needs that, right? So it's not necessarily, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't put a lot of value in like, hey, let's turn every single unit in the game into a Gale Force unit. Um, like a lot of like Acarus and a lot of other people seem to want to do, uh, with everything. Cause like, you know, he saw Kanto and as soon as he saw Kanto, uh, and a, and a, and a three range movement cav, um, Phoenix Master 1 also was like, oh, you know. You, you could run around Gale Force and then do this, that, and it's just like, okay, thanks. It's like every unit can just be a, every new unit is just a copy paste of like, run Gale Force. It's like, oh, okay, well, why do I care about your opinion if all you're going to do is tell me uh, to run Gale Force on it? Like, it's, it's just really weird. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, let's back to, let's stop uh, harking on, on stupid stuff. Let's uh, look at these skills. Uh, so for one, attack. Swift Sparrow, uh, Surge Sparrow already beats Swift Sparrow 3 just by one extra point of attack. So, because Swift Sparrow gives you plus 6 attack, plus 7 speed, um, but Surge Sparrow gives you 7 and 7. So, um, I think that in and of itself, it, it, it's just straight upgrade, right? So, if you're looking for something better than Swift Sparrow 3, there you go, you've got it. And we got the power creep uh, in full effect. Now, the, the thing that kind of pushes it over the edge is, in fact, this... Um, the secondary ability, which gives you um, healing based on your 
on how much time uh, your special takes to, to spool up. So since she reduces it by, by one, it's a two turn special. So she's gonna heal two times 20. So 50% of her HP off of a uh, Luna, which is pretty good. Uh, basically turns it into, it basically turns it into a, um, an Aether, a two turn Aether, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, this actually, funnily enough, this works a lot better with special um, charging, so like Heavy Blade, Flashing Blade, because it keeps the high number, but you charge it faster, and you know the acceleration reduces the number, which reduces how much healing you get, which isn't so bad considering she still gets fifty percent off a two turn special. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, then we got the the, the B skill, which is um, Canto Two plus gives her. Uh, neutralizes units penalties and yeah and then she gets guard right and then um she also gets damage scaling when her special trigger is based off of uh the foe's defense uh so of course that's going to be very good so this this right here um is the main thing that makes her really strong against edelgard is the high defense scaling uh on her special triggering uh, especially if it's luna and the ability to heal off of that from like the surge right um that's what makes her good against Edelgard, not necessarily like the tank effectiveness or whatever else they wanted to tell you. Because um, Edelgard, like the biggest, the, the the easiest way to deal with Edelgard is just to kill her. Like I know that's like a non-answer and I know that's kind of stupid. Um, but you really just need like overwhelming firepower to kill her. Because if you're like trying to fight with her, you really can't because of how much healing she has and how much mobility she has and how much like special charging she has. Like... Edelgard has so much going on that you just need to like one shot her and like having Moonlight Bangle uh, with defense scaling and all that stuff and maybe a Luna charged if you hit her with it, that's what's going to kill uh, a fallen Edelgard. Uh, not so much like, oh, you know, she's got effectiveness or whatever. I need to turn that off. Uh, so that, that's important to realize. Uh, but yeah, like I said, um, another Cav Lance unit. Um, I really, I can't be asked. Um, honestly, I think in the long term like a plus 10 patrine properly invested with skills and stuff might be better for dealing with fallen idol guard um because she has beast effectiveness and fallen idol guard is always going to be a beast there's no like removes beast weakness um but yeah it's going to take a lot of investment to get your your uh <laughs> to get your um what's her name your patrine up to up to snuff in that sense um but yeah, I don't know. I, I that's that's kind of why I don't really care too much about this unit because I've already got Petrine. I'm investing in her and I'm working on getting merges on her and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so you know, if you want to again, if you want to plus ten, she's gonna be doing good damage against like all tanks in the game because of the damage scaling on her S two. But for those of you who just want to slap on a Gale Force build on everything, unfortunately, you're wasting the B slot and the A slot passive. So take that as you will. Um, but yeah, so again. I'm probably my priority is still Marth, but if I pull her, that'd be pretty good because um, Swiss Sparrow, Surge Sparrow would be pretty good on my um, what's it called for anyone's really um, pretty good for your oh, what's her name uh, Duo Lin right and the Ninja Lin uh, because Ninja Lin comes with Swiss Sparrow three and just putting this on her gets her one extra attack and the ability to heal, which is pretty good. So you know. You can't really go wrong there. Uh, unfortunately, again, she has the problem of like reducing her own uh, special cooldown number thing. So this is only going to heal you for like what ten times twenty, thirty percent, which isn't too good, isn't too bad. It's just kind of it is what it is, right? So but yeah, so that's the only reason I would want her is to take the Swiss uh, Surge Sparrow. So we know all the stats for them, but again, like. I'm not gonna sit here and go through their stats because it doesn't really matter a lot of the time. It's for for the most part we're looking at um, we're just looking at skills like what what the new power creep is. I don't think I understand it, but I suppose they chose me for a reason. And this is a unit that I actually just want to pull just to pull, but unfortunately I'm kind of forced to pull for a specific reason. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, grants attack uh, speed plus three, start of combat, whatever. Um, if unit's HP is over, she gets a uh, null, or what's it, a lull, uh, lull speed res. Um, lull speed res, like four or five, or whatever you want to call it, because it's minus six and it neutralizes their, their bonuses to that. 
Um, and also she gets 70% damage reduction. So that's actually pretty significant for someone who's like... She, given her kit and everything, she looks like a damage dealer, but I don't really think she she's going... Like, she's not a nuker, right? She's a, she's a damage dealer, but not a nuker. I think she's just like here to like help do consistent damage and help give extra people turns and whatnot. Um... But I don't think she's like just gonna mega nuke people. But fortunately, she has enough survivability from her from her her tome, um, and she's got enough offenses from from like all the speed. So she gets uh, plus three speed, reduces their speed by six, um, plus you know five attack speed uh, from her A skill and all that stuff. So she's gonna be decently fast and decently like damage dealy, but she's not gonna be like a, a damage carry, right? So, uh, but she's gonna be very useful because of her support skill, which if she initiates combat after combat, she becomes another action to the ally with the highest HP within two spaces, right? Um, but she also, if an ally is granted additional action this way, she restricts their movement to one, which is kind of like, I, I don't know. It, it just kind of like giving someone else one space of movement after you go is kind of worthless unless they've got like um, Wings of Mercy or something like that, which whatever, or, or Flyer, uh, what's it called? Yeah, uh, a Ground Orders or something like that. Um, yeah, I just, I'm not entirely sure how this is, like, what this is useful for, because, um, like, unless, I guess, like, the, the, the idea is she'll go, she'll, like, re, reenact a dancer, and then the dancer just needs to move, like, one space to touch her, because you have to be within two spaces anyway, to touch her, and then dance her, and then she can do something else, right? Uh, I'm assuming that's what's the, what, that's what the idea is here. Um, because like if you have her and then, you know, you, you requiem dance, like someone out, like on the damage deal or something, they're not going to be able to get in range. Most of the, most of the time, they're not going to be able to get in range with one movement to do whatever you want them to do. Right. Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of important to realize. Uh, but I, I, th I still think it's going to be useful. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to see how this works on like, uh, Aether Aid's, uh, defense or offense or something like that. Like. I'm interested to see getting attacked by this and seeing how someone um, might use it uh, or or seeing how um, yeah or seeing how someone would use it on de on defense uh, funnily enough uh, like everything right <laughs> people are probably gonna use this with gale force because that's the only thing people know how to do these days is just gale force everything um, so probably someone's gonna be able to attack uh, gale force attack again then she's gonna get close hit someone uh, Requiem dance and then give them the extra movement and then like you know they'll do something else and attack again or something like that right I mean, this, could, this would be kind of interesting if you're like if you're fighting it's like a flyer ball or some kind of armor ball or just something like where they're really close to each other like you take fallen edelgard and then you throw her in there with um gale force she hits like three people you go in there snipe someone else with her uh, and then she gives edelgard another movement and then you know edelgard moves just one space and then hits someone else again <laughs> and that's it that's like what, three units from the first Edelgard attack, uh, and another four because she gets danced, and then a fifth unit because um, this she's gonna hit she's gonna hit them right. Uh, so it's five units in one turn before anything's happened, and then they've got six right. So you know, that it's kind of interesting to think about, but um, <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see if if we see that in action. Uh, so, so like I said, she has a lot of aggressive stuff. So she's got attack speed unity, uh, no follow up, so she can get her doubles. Um, and she's got times pulse to help charge her uh, her special, which is fine. Um, I think she is a dancer too, so you could probably just put a dance on her. But I'm not entirely sure; I don't remember. Um, but I think for most people, I've said this a lot of times, but I really need this attack speed unity for um, dual bilith for my defense, right? Because a lot of times people come in here with their um, with like uh, sabotage speed or something or, or chill you know speed or whatever and and she's she's really she's the fastest one so she's gonna get hit by the chills um, or just like any debuffs in general so attack speed unity is basically the better version of attack speed push from that that um, that she already has on her because you get two less on the bottom end right so uh, attack speed push four is gonna give you plus seven um, Attack speed unity gives you only plus five, but the fact that like if, if if they run some sort of panic or something or 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 just like just any debuff, this thing will give them extra points based on that. So you can't really like stop Edelgard or you can't really stop um Byleth by debuffing her. She's still just gonna come in and uh fire sweep double somebody and then kill them, hopefully, right? Um 
so I think losing the two speed on the top end uh, for the ability to just negate uh, penalties and whatnot, I think it's significantly better, especially like on the flyer ball where you can pull off the unity pretty easily because everybody's going to be balled up everywhere. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what the main thing I want from, from her is I really want that attack speed unity, so it's going to suck that I... Because uh, I really like... <laughs> That, that frame was like, at first I was just like, all I want is the attack speed unity, but then I saw this and I was just like, no, I need a copy of her too. <laughs> um, so yeah, so at, at where we are now at this point, uh, we need both Marianne and uh, Marth. That's that's two pities. Hopefully I don't have to use two pities to, to get that, but it is what it is. Uh, so then we have this guy. Um, yeah, I don't know. The gatekeeper, he doesn't even have a name. Uh, so let's. So he's got a spear, which everyone thought he was going to be a spear guy, but he turned out to be a, a mage. Um, funnily enough, I guess while we're at the end now, uh, it's kind of annoying that we didn't get any flying units uh, in this Chooser Legends. Um, I think most of them have had a flying unit. Like we had um, Queen Camilla in one. We had. Uh, um, obviously we had, what's her name, um, Micaiah in another one. I can't remember all of them, just because can't be asked. But uh, yeah, it's just kind of sad we didn't get a flying unit. So, you know, whatever. Uh, but yeah, here we are. So, I mean, that, that, that probably would have been like the only thing I would have summoned was like, like if it's like, oh, I don't have enough orbs to plus 10. I've only got 500 now. But if I had like, you know, a thousand or whatever, and I was like, oh, I'm going to plus 10 one of the Choose Your Legends unit, it would have been like whatever. The, it, maybe it, it could have been one of the flying units, but we didn't get any flying units. So here we are. Um, uh, so we've got Charging Horn, which is kind of interesting because it gives attack speed uh, plus five to like everyone. Because basically it's three, col three columns and three rows centered on him, which basically covers like the whole map. Um... Yeah, and then you know he gets effects based on uh, whatever. So inflicts this based on the number of allies. Uh, he reduces the attack res, which is pretty good. Uh, if there's three or more, you know he denies their follow-ups, and then uh, he he counts structures that can be destroyed as allies, which is pretty interesting. Um, so he'd be pretty interesting in Aether raids, I think, um, for for a lot of reasons. But you know, based on this, it's like oh, it's pretty interesting having a. Uh, such a fully like kitted out uh, support unit just have them sitting there and like uh, granting uh, plus five attack speed to like to everyone it's pretty interesting to me uh, harsh command plus has kind of you know it's been here since for a while uh, we got joint drive defense which um, is generally the better one because drives are uh, significantly more useful uh, and then we've got basically close foil uh, close counter but uh, power creeped again so if unit initiates combat, grants plus five defense to unit during combat, and unit can counterattack regardless of full domain. So, uh, like I said, just close counter with um, five defense. Now, if I was gonna, if I wanted him, I was probably gonna pull for this specifically, but uh, there's not a whole lot of units I, I have right now that really need this. So, for the time being, um, he's probably gonna be the lowest on the priority list of who I want out of this. But again, since I'm gonna be summoning the whole circle, who knows what we'll get. Um, but yeah, so looking at this, it's funny because it's basically half of what Ostian counter is, which Ostian counter gives you plus four and plus four attack defense. Uh, so you get one more defense, but you lose the attack, which theoretically is fine. But, um, like I said, if you have any, like basically any, any unit that you use that has close foil, uh, close counter, just put this on them because, uh, it's just straight up power creep to close counter. Um, is it better than close foil? Uh, you're losing the plus five attack from close foil, but close foil kind of shuts you off from uh, countering basically dragons. Um, so that's something that you need to weigh in and weigh out. Uh, so, but yeah, if if you're if you have a unit and you're fine with the fact that they just have close counter, uh, close reversal is just straight up better. So I think you know if you want that, then go ahead. But like I said, uh, the units I have that have close counter and everything, like I haven't been using them as much, so I'm kind of like eh on it. Um, but yeah, so let's take a look at detailed report because uh, this is we're probably going to see this a lot on 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 offense on our, on a on AR offense because this stops 
uh, a bunch of warp skills, so it stops like flyer formation. So they're probably you know this might be something used against flyer balls, but flyer balls aren't that useful, aren't that uh, common. Um, but it also stops like um, wings of mercy and whatnot. So like any any uh, any of the movement stuff are gonna get stopped by this within four spaces. But uh, yeah, four spaces of unit, um, which is pretty interesting. Uh, depending on whether or not you can get them in range is is an issue. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be like, we're going to see this a lot just because Aether Raids is, is a huge breeding ground for just like, like there's a reason they made the fence, right? It's just a huge breeding ground of like degenerate movement abilities. So one of the things like the fence itself, basically like the fence kind of shows us that, uh, fire, uh, you know, Fey or, or IS or whoever, you know, whoever you want to, uh, not blame, but whoever you want to single out didn't really doesn't really like the fact that we're all like they don't really like the fact that, that teams are acting on turn one uh because of you know nonsensical rally stuff and all this other bull crap that happens um the fence doesn't really stop uh what, what are they what are called uh cav lines but they yeah it doesn't really stop cav lines which is the, the bigger problem but at least it stops the, the degeneracy of having people like do like all kinds of stuff on turn one um, before you have any time to set up or anything like that. Um, but this this skill probably helps. Like this skill is kind of like I feel like this skill is like the fence. It's just like a weird band aid thing where it's like all the warp, all the warper shenanigans that happen in, in Aether raids uh, get kind of canceled out by this. Like all the like wings of mercy freaking um, you know ground orders nonsense um but yeah i mean i, th I think that's fine uh if, you, if that really bothers you then i mean by all means i think maybe this will be a good solution but i think the four like it's a question of the four spaces of within within four spaces of unit like how 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 often can you get that in range to to pull that off right that that's kind of what what this hinges on and, and for, i mean for one like i don't really think that he's going to be in the mix enough uh to to warrant like oh you know he's gonna he's gonna stop that stuff but who knows maybe i just not that good with my movement and and for for two i mean a lot of people have been playing like a lot of people have been playing aether raids and enjoying aether raids for the past few months even like you know the past half a year maybe the past year and we've had all this like turn one nonsense and all these cav lines and they've been having fun playing against that so you know who's this really helping is my question right like if you hate playing against that and you hate dealing with that, this isn't really going to help you too much. Um, and if you're an avid Aether Raids player, you don't need this because, again, you're the kind of person who has fun playing against Cavline or Turn 1 teams, which, you know, who knows what kind of person that is. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, I think they're going to show the... Like, so in these four units, we didn't get a flyer, which kind of sucks, right? But then on top of that... And he opens the gates of whatever. But then on top of that, the, even the GHB was in a flying unit, which is like, dude, come on. So <laughs> we didn't. Uh, Flyers didn't get anything. I think the GHB is. Uh, well, I guess he's not here. Yeah, uh, you can spark four times. I think it says here. I, th I thought it was usually down here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Uh, so you can spark four times. So I think what I'm going to do is spark once for him. At least I need to spark once for him because he's like the priority. I just need the distant counter with the plus five speed. Um, but hopefully along the way, I'll get like two copies. I mean, okay, so here's the plan, right? I need one copy of him and two copies of her and that's it, right? I doubt that's going to work out that way because that's three units that I have to pull within one pity, which isn't going to, that's not... That's not that's not like mathematically likely. So, um, hopefully, at least I get one of her or one of him. Um, sadly, uh, I'm going to miss her, but I'm probably gonna have to fought her off for Summer Violet, uh, just because I think Summer Violet is just way better. And I mean, aesthetically, I mean it's Summer Violet, right? So it's like, sure, I'm missing out on Marianne, but. Um, having that uh attack speed unity is is significantly more important and i guess like the, the times finally come right because 
usually when I make a, a, a Aether Raids update video on my um, on my defense, that's like the one of the things I mention every time is that Summer Biolus, as soon as I get, as soon as Attack Speed Unity comes out, I'm, I'm throwing it on her to, just because I'm tired of like having people debuff her uh, and then having her not be fast enough because I'm a minus seven hitter. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully uh, anyone found this useful. Um, I kind of doubt it. I kind of doubt it, but uh, yeah, better than nothing. I mean, Acris is back, so you could probably check his stuff out. Uh, he's probably just gonna tell you about Gale Force, or he's going to complain that everyone complains that all he talks about is Gale Force. So he's just gonna be like, "I'm not gonna talk about Gale Force," um, while talking about Gale Force, <laughs> right? So that's something to consider. Uh, and again, you know, so like I said, there's, there's a whole lot of other sources out there, but um, I just wanted to add my two cents to some of these units and, and kind of like, I guess, I don't know, I, I, I do feel a lot of times like I, I tend to kill the hype for certain banners just because like, I'm not like, I'm not here to tell you that like these units are broken and you need like a plus 10 of them and waste all your orbs on them because they really aren't that strong where like a plus 10 is a must and it's going to like change your your aether raids and arena and like just like your entire fire emblem experience is going to change because you have a plus 10 of any of these which you know you don't the only one that's like the only the only brave hero probably that's come out that like a plus 10 of that unit will will change your whole like game experience is, is probably brave hector and brave hector was like in the second gen of of, of brave heroes so that kind of goes to show you like how much like to what degree how broken they have to be to really like stand out and and you know these these four still haven't even reached the level of of brave hector now not not when brave hector released obviously when brave hector released he was kind of whatever uh he was pretty strong at the time uh he was one of the stronger tanks at the time and you still had to uh worry about him but he kind of fell off really quickly when you know stronger green mages came out and um and just more tank effectiveness came out but uh, what I, what I'm referring to is the um, the the newly the new refined Hector, uh, brave Hector, is what you know uh, plus ten of that. Like if that banner comes back, like if you're if you're like oh you know which which one of these four should I um, plus ten? My answer is just wait till like there's a brave Hector banner and then plus ten him and he'll carry you in Aether raids and Aether, in arena in and just every 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 content in the game. Brave Hector is going to carry you, so I, I think you wouldn't need to worry too much. Um, another one who was like that strong was probably uh, Brave Ike, but he's kind of fallen off a little bit. Um, but he's still pretty strong. Every now and then you'll see him. Uh, but yeah, like he was another another like every team like all your Aether Aether raids defenses had to have like some answer to him. Uh, otherwise, you were just going to like get stomped on because he had so much damage reduction and he was just so tanky. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I would rather just save my orbs for someone like a plus 10 Hector or a plus 10 Edelgard. Um, and if you need any of the skills they showed here, then I, I think, you know, that, that's a good time to summon. If, if, you know, going off of the way I, I'm envisioning, I'm probably gonna have to pity him. I'm gonna pull two of these or one of these or each of these. And I'm not gonna get any copies of her and I'm probably gonna have to go for the pity. Watch. Uh, so I'm calling that right now before I do that summoning video because that's what's gonna happen. Um, but uh, if I'm lucky, I mean, like I said, it still wouldn't be too bad to get these because I like her uh, Surge Sparrow and I like his uh, close whatever, his close counter upgrade. Um, but yeah, so they all have skills you, you'd want to pull, but I, I wouldn't pity like one of each, right? I just kind of, I would just kind of hope that you would get, I you know, the best case scenario is pitying him and then getting all three of them on the way, but you know, I don't think that's going to happen. Um but yeah, I'm probably going to just save orbs uh, again. I'm still waiting for that magical banner that has like Duo Lin and Edelgard on it or, or something like that, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of wishful thinking, but um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So uh, yeah, I mean, you know, good luck if for those of you who decide to summon and uh, we'll, I'll see you in the actual summoning video and we'll, we'll talk about it then.